Alright, Salam Tana Tena Yisterling. Salam Tana Tena Yisterling. Greetings. Send that Salam. Shabbat Shalom. And this is the ninth Sabbath in this year. So let's get a time check. This is actually so called one day after the the Babylonian and Amerikawi uh, so called Thanksgiving day which there's a that's a whole that's a whole drama in itself just speaking about you know how how many of the people have it says like when you saw a thief you consented with the thief and have been partakers with adulterers and that's basically the situation that um the situation that those who those who um make excuses for the Babylonian system. Those who make excuses and those who have have gotten some of the filthy uh the filthy dollars of corruption and who are, who have profited by such wickedness basically they, they, they justify this particular um system of things. But the time check is November November twenty sixth, Friday, November twenty sixth, twenty ten. Senbet Salam Shabbat Shalom. Now the reading, the the Torah reading for this sabbatical time is called Why Yisheb, Why Yisheb in um, restored Hebrew, but the Ashkenazis they say Vayishev, Vayishev. Um, according to the King of Kings, according to the Met of Kedus of Haile Selassie the First, it is known as Tekemet or Benoribet Tekemet, which actually is, is two words from that particular verse that we find at the beginning of the ninth Sabbatical reading. Which let's just go over that's Orit Zemuse the Torah, so it's from. Genesis 37 and 1 to Genesis 40 and 23. So that's the reading, the feeding from the Torah, which is the basic foundation. And there's a particularly interesting uh, scriptural verse where it says that where, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And there's an interesting New Testament, a New Testament reference as well that kind of touches on that from John chapter 749 where they said that the people that knoweth not the law are cursed. And even though this, um, this word is in the mouth of the so-called Pharisees, you understand that Jesus Christos, Yehoshua HaMoshi, did not, did not object to it because his purpose and his goal was to enlighten those who were dwelling and sitting in darkness, those who were sitting in darkness. And, and that idea about sitting, sitting in darkness and ignorance, they were dwelling. The idea behind that is that they dwell in ignorance. And we find that this particular sabbatical reading and this particular sabbatical study, now in the, in the Gutters, just to touch on the, the Hebrew and the Royal Amharic and the Gutters, it's called We Nebre. Wednebre, which means and he sat. It's the basic idea, and he sat, and he dwelt. Vayeshev, 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 and it begins as we said from Genesis chapter thirty-seven and one to Genesis chapter forty and twenty-three. The Nabiyat or the Haftara reading is from Amos chapter two, verse six to Amos chapter three, verse eight, and the. Hadith Kidan or the Burit Hadasha, the New Testament, New Covenant readings, is from Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 to 6, as well as verses uh, 16 to 23, 25 of Matthew chapter 1. So this is the ninth sabbatical uh, time period in the circuit, in the circuit and the orb the orbit of the heavens, and it's very significant as we try to touch on some of the um, correspondences and, and relations of the heavens with proper, accurate timekeeping. But now we're going to touch on the history of 
the history of Yaakov is resumed, which begins chapter 37 of Genesis. Genesis 37, the history of Yaakov resumed, and it says, And Yaakov, or Jacob, dwelt Yisheb, and Jacob tekemet, and Jacob nebre, wa nebre, in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan or the Canaanu. Now, Yosef, the beloved of his father, says these are the generations of Yaiko. A couple of, of, of weeks previous, we touched on the generations or the generation of um, Yishak. Now we are going to speak on the generation of his son Yaiko. Joseph, the beloved of his father. This section is called Joseph, the beloved of his father. And it begins with, these are the generations of Yaakov. Yosef, being 17 years old. It points out here, interestingly enough, the age of Yosef was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah. And with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. Now, in another section, it's called, uh, they were the woman servants. And now, here, they are called his wives. And just for the record, Yaakov had four wives. At first, he only wanted one wife. But then, because of Laban, his father-in-law, and the whole Leah, Rachel thing matter, he had two wives, for which he worked 14 years. And with them, they each had their handmaids. And then, with the back and forth with the two sisters, the two wives, he basically had four wives. And from these four wives, or from such a foundation, comes... Our ancestral, from the natural part of it, the natural foundation, reflective as above, so below, as a reflection of what is above on earth. So here it points out that Yosef was 17 years old. He's feeding the flock of his brethren, with his brethren, excuse me, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. Now there's an interesting point why I point out. These, you have to remember that, that Joseph, Yosef, he was the beloved of his father because the original woman or wife that he wanted to marry, that he worked seven years for, Rachel, was the mother of Yosef. So it's something very interesting because he, was, he loved the mother, he loved the child. Now, the situation with the other mothers, of course he loved the other children, but you have to understand um, uh, Jacob and Jacob's experience to really get uh, a, a clarity of it. And we point that out because it lays some very important background for the studies that are contained in this particular section. Because here it says, And Yosef brought to his father their evil <laughs> report. And Joseph did what? Joseph, Joseph brought to his father their evil report. Whose evil report? The sons of Bilhah, the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, or some may say his father's uh, concubine, from which the other children, the, the uh, Israel, Bani Israel, came from. Now, I said that. Now, Israel, who is Yaakov, loved Joseph more than all his children. Some would say it's favoritism, right? But be that as it may, uh, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. It's going to pay off, too, as we go forward. But it says, because he was the son of his old age. Look at that. The other children were the sons of his younger age. But now here we find that, that Joseph or Joseph was loved more than Israel or Yaakov's other children. And the Metaf actually states because, it gives us a reason, because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. So here's where we get Joseph and the coat of many colors. And some of y'all may have seen some of these kind of Babylonian whacked out kind of dramatization, so forth and so on. But it's important first to understand what the scriptures 
what the what the word says, what the origination, at least our reference point to these ideas that many men and people take and they twist and they turn in a lot of different ways. Now, as we go over this, because we want to go into detail of this, but we want to first give an overview to what is contained in the ninth sabbatical reading and the ninth sabbatical matter to get an overview of this particular uh, Torah uh, parasha or this particular orit kifl, this particular portion. So please stay tuned. Yah willing, we will go into more of the detail in the uh, succeeding and the next portions and parts of this. Salam. Shalom. Yeah. All right, salam tonight.